G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So, what good is it having a steering wheel that's in a lot better condition than what it was and not having our steering arm and steering box? So, it shouldn't be too much, it's not too involved in this. We're gonna strip it down, clean it all up, repack it, and put it all back together and hopefully get it back into Sam so he has a steering wheel. Let's get straight into it. The steering wheel column boot, this is pretty common to find them pretty much like this. The heat from the firewall and the engine is always baked up against that, uh, that rubber. And like, well, this is over 50 years old, so you're not gonna expect that to survive. So a new genuine Toyota one, and it's just turned up in the mail, so that means we can get into this and put it together. We've already cleaned up and painted the surround, so that'll all go nice. Right now you can see that the grease in here is probably the original grease. It's pretty funky to be honest. But I think if we clean it all up, everything feels pretty, pretty good in there. It's like uh, there's no rust, there's no seizing. So it's been sealed up and it's held up really, really well over the last few years. Everything moves freely inside, which is a really, really good sign. Now we need to remove this main shaft from here, so we should be able to just punch that straight out, straight down like this. We do have a bit of damage around here and an old seal, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna hang that over the bench, we're just gonna tap that straight out. Right out there it is in all its glory. Again, like I said, everything moves really, really freely. Even though it's old, yucky, funky grease, it has saved all the components in this, which is really, really good to see. Right, so we're just gonna tape a roller bearing in the end there. So if we sit that over the bench and we just hit this shaft and tap it out, that should come out as well. Yummy, <laughs> it looks like caramel. Righto, that's it. There's, there's basically nothing else to this steering box. In here, we've got uh, a nice brass bush. And we've got a, uh, like a lip seal or an old style lip seal on this side here. Anyway, let's clean it all up. Um, and give it a paint and we'll have a look at how it all looks afterwards. Right, I so everything is cleaned up absolutely beautiful and the best thing about it is I don't have to replace any bearings. The bearings in this hardly do any work at all. It's either this, which is pretty much it. So all the bearings, they're really cleaned up really, really nicely. And the inside of the uh, outer race is Fantastic, there's no pitting, there's no marking, there's no shutters, there's absolutely nothing. So we're gonna to continue to use the existing bearings and the existing outer races as well. If I don't drop it and break it first. All right, the other thing I had was, uh, this was out of the, uh, the outer tube. This is for the horn, or well, I'm pretty sure it's for the horn. It had a broken wire, so I've just soldered a new wire onto that. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure how the horn is gonna work yet but we'll figure that all out as we put it all together and hopefully get it uh, when we go to put the steering wheel out. Okay, everything's here, everything's good. What we're gonna do is gonna repack it with some Molly Tac grease 
and we're not going to overpack it because we do have some points here that we can uh, put a grease nipple on or repack some grease. Now, we had to get a uh, second housing. This part here was pretty damaged, and to be honest, it was quicker and easier for me to just grab another housing that I actually had here already that has a much better in condition around where the lip seal goes. The other lip seal on the other one, it was pretty bunged up on both sides, crushed in, and it's a very old sort of felt style seal with sort of a center cup. What we've done, we've gone high tech and we've bought a brand new lip seal, 32447. Now I'm gonna put all the part numbers down below them, but you can go to any bearing shop or seal shop and be able to buy one of them. And it'll fit straight into the, out part, the outside of the housing there. And the other thing I've checked is all our brass bushing in here is in, again, excellent condition. Like I said, it doesn't do much work, the steering box, so there's no reason why it can't last for pretty much forever. Just needs a really good cleanup. So every part we've got like a bit of a brass bush, we're gonna line that with some grease as well. Now they didn't have any gaskets and I believe they never had gaskets, but we're gonna put a very small film of the RTV gasket maker just to help it seal in and stop any water and all that type of stuff getting in. So it'll be a fully sealed box. No water, no mud will get in here. And what we put in as far as grease will stay in there. Anyway, let's start uh, just packing these bearings and getting it all back together. A little bit of grease, and all we're going to do is just push it right into those bearing centers in there, just as it was before, before we cleaned it all out. We didn't go into the cleaning process because it's just a long, dirty process. It's just flushing it all out, cleaning it all with some parts cleaner, brake cleaner, whatever you've got lying around. So it's the same as packing a wheel bearing, exactly the same process. We're just forcing the grease down into the cage of the bearing. We've still got uh, our outer race inside there, make sure it's in good condition and we've greased all the bushes. Now they've got grooves cut into them, make sure those grooves are nice full of grease. Now what we're going to do is slide our steering box housing straight over and drop that into place. Get our outer race and we'll tap that back into its position in there. Just get it flat because when you bolt on the rear face plate, it'll pull it all back into place. Right, so that's sort of half built. Now what we need to do is put in our connecting shaft. Okay, now we're at this point, we can actually jam a whole lot more of grease in there just before we put the outer cover back on. So let's do that. Nice big finger load of it. May as well put some in there while we can. Right, so we've packed in a fair bit of grease. We can always put more in later from the top there. We can put a grease nipple on the top. I'm gonna to put a very small amount of this RS80 from Chemtools gasket maker on it. Now the cool thing about this one is, is it's self-applicating. We don't need a corking gun, we don't need to squeeze tubes or anything like that. So really, really cool stuff. Make sure all your surfaces are really clean. All right, that's ready to go straight on the back here. This back nut here is for adjusting our steering later on. Do exactly the same on the back here. Really small amount, probably less than the top one. By doing this one up, we're pulling that outer race of the bearing onto the bearing so it'll seat it all perfectly. So we'll just work around it evenly. Right, 
Right, our, our box is all done up and sealed up except for those lip seals that used to be the old felt seal. Right, I've just put a tiny little bit of grease on the inside of that lip seal just to help it give it a little bit of lubrication, seal up, help it slide on our shaft. Now, if it was the felt seal, you'd be doing the same thing. You would be preloading that felt full of grease and that would make it waterproof as well. Slide that straight over. What would be ideal right now is a big deep socket that would fit over that. I don't have any deep sockets that are over 32 mil size. So we're gonna very carefully just tap it around just with a pin punch. Just work our way around just to get that sealing position. Look at that, we are done. Right, so let's uh, let's fit our our horn mechanism. Plus, it's a bush to hold it all in place. I'm going to feed this wire down and hopefully get it out of that hole halfway down. There's two little clips in here that once you push in, you can tap them in place. We can fold those little tabs down. Just with a pin punch and the hammer again. Again, I'm not exactly sure what used to be down the end here. Possibly an O-ring. There's like a little woodruff key on the back there that would have held all this in position. Looks like there's some type of clamp that went around it. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that either. But what I am going to do, I am going to run a bit of gasket sealant just around here. Again, that will stop and seal that up from there. We can put it all in, we can slide it in, sort of half mount it up in the car. And then we need to do a little bit of restoration work on our blinker store. And hopefully all these wires are going to be okay. So I'm going to strip all that down, have a look, make sure it's okay. Pull that wire, make sure that stays up out of the way. Line up our little woodruff key. Perfect. Now all I need to do is find that type of clamp that was on there. Again, if you guys know what it is, please let me know, hit me up. Otherwise we'll end up using something, something else just to clamp that into place. But anyway, that's ready to go into the car. Let's get it in. Pull the steering over. That's it, sits in there better now. You actually see where it used to sit just with that little witness mark there. Right, so our blinker stalk and our wiring, it all looks okay, it just looks like it needs a really good clean up. We'll uh, just have to put the multi meter on, make sure that we've got connection through all those wires. You see the mechanism at the back is really solid actually. Got the old Toyota book here. Now it has a wiring diagram. It just says pre-1972. It's good enough because it all matched up. Well, we cleaned all this up with some R1, which gave it a spring back. Tested it all with a multimeter, and it all works. So that's fantastic. So it looks like to me that uh, there's power coming in here. Power comes in when you flick the uh, switch to left or right, picking the right wires. It all works, so that's great news. It's out drying because we've just painted it. We'll put it all back together. And we'll be able to make it all come together. So that's awesome news. Well, the last thing we've got to do is actually put the steering wheel on. So it's been a big day, everything's done. 
We found all the components for the steering wheel, which is really, really good, including the little horn bit. But I still think I'm missing a main spring or an insulator or something like that. But anyway, we'll put it all together and it'll be done. And just in time, Ali has turned up with the steering wheel to do the final touches. <laughs> good timing. Put it on. Make sure it's straight like that. Yeah, I know. I was just testing you. Testing me? Right, oh, so the last thing to go on for this steering wheel is the center cap, which has come up pretty good considering what it used to look like. Ali's going to put it on. That's it, that's it. So the entire steering box has been totally rebuilt or repacked. It's all nice and fresh. We checked all the wiring and it seems legit, so hopefully that'll be fine. And the steering wheel is now on. Blinkers are all set up. What do you reckon, Ali? Looks great. Looks great. Ali hasn't been down here for a while. Soccer, school. Ali got her elves, which is very exciting. She's on the road driving, so we really need to get Sam up and going so she can take it for a drive. On top of that, We've got a whole lot of stuff going on with Minty, trying to get it ready for uh, an engine swap and long drive for a drought coming up later this year. And Charlie's building a caravan and she's taking up some time while we do that too, which is all exciting. But anyway, it's all happening. So hopefully next time we come back, Ali, we can actually start putting on some panels and start putting the cab back together for Sam. What do you reckon? Yeah. Absolutely. Right guys, so thanks heaps for your support. Feel free to subscribe down below, leave a comment, let us know about some of the bits and pieces we think we're missing on this steering wheel. Let us know if you know what they are or whether you've got them. That'd be really, really cool. And until next time. Thanks for watching.